And let's bring in Republican Congressman from the great state of Wisconsin, Sean Duffy. Sean, you know, we knew you were going to be on, so we have a big breaking news night. We got uh, Andrew McCabe, Deputy Director of the FBI, fired right before his big pension was going to kick in. Huge controversy swirling around this. Uh, some already crying foul, saying this firing is political, but it was done at the behest of the Office of Personal, uh, Professional Responsibility, which is not a political office. And their conclusions about his conduct apparently devastating. Congressman Duffy. Yes, yeah, although I've uh, criticized uh, Jeff Sessions quite a bit, that he actually held back a little bit and waited for the Office of Professional Res Responsibility to give us a recommendation in regard to uh, Mr. McCabe. I think he handled it correctly. But Laura, no one gets fired in the swamp. That we have uh, a, a former head of uh, the FBI who's now fired, I think shows that the system actually can work. And I look at the FBI, I mean, not, not the, the, the boots on the ground, but at the top of the FBI, this place is rotten. And thank God Donald Trump was elected so we can start clearing um, out all of these rotten individuals who are playing partisanship uh, with one of the most powerful agencies that exist in Washington. Think back to Lois Lerner. I mean, Lois Lerner at the IRS who targeted conservative, uh, conservatives and conservative groups. The status quo was you leave those people in, you let them retire, and you let them get their pensions. Under Donald Trump draining the swamp, you start firing people who violate the ethics uh, within their agency or violate the law. This is a great thing. Yeah, there's a Frank Montoya Jr., former senior FBI official, saying that this is a political hit job on McCabe, his supposed ideological bias, the fact his wife ran for office as a Democrat, the attacks on his competence are way out of line. Uh, Sarah. Again. No, because this can't be a political hit job if OPR, the Office of Professional Responsibility, got documentation, provable facts, that he violated his oath as an FBI agent and lied. And who did he lie to? He lied to the inspector general. He probably lied to other FBI wow. agents. And this could be leading to criminal charges. So, no, I'm sorry. I know they want to defend him. He did serve his country. It's a yeah. tragedy that we see this happen before everyone. But we really need to know the truth. And this, the FBI, as well as other agencies, really need to be cleaned out. Was he under investigation before the Trump administration? Was this investigation predating Donald Trump? Because I, I keep hearing whispers about that. Well, there are whispers. And it, well, part of that is due to the fact that he was under investigation for possible Hatch Act violations. Uh. He was referred by Senator Grassley as well to be investigated for not appropriately disclosing the amount of money his wife got okay. from the you know, unsuccessful bid for the state uh, Senate. From Terry McAuliffe. Yeah, from Terry his, McAuliffe. His, his past. Yeah, and so there were some issues there. Also a sexual discrimination lawsuit. You know, there were issues there yep. um, that he had to deal with but th this investigation spiraled out of the evidence that came forth when we started to realize it, McCabe was at the center of this Comey was at the center of this text messages the no. investigation it, that Michael Horowitz has done exceptionally Can, well am I, am I good to roll yeah go ahead yeah, oh. let's go. Let's let's uh, okay, okay. Uh, yeah, Sean, 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 hold that thought Thanks for, for one me. second because we have Congressman Mark Meadows yeah, no, on no, the no, phone no. as that's, well that's from the House Thanks. Freedom Caucus, member of the Oversight Committee. Congressman Meadows, uh, look, we for for months have been saying, how did you have the same people who were investigating Hillary's private email server also oversee the investigation into Donald Trump's possible collusion with the Russians? We saw that with Peter Strzok. We then found his text messages, and now the conclusion by the Office of Professional Responsibility about Andrew McCabe leading to his firing tonight. Uh, your reaction to this huge breaking news night, Congressman Meadows? Well, it, it is uh, unbelievable news, and like my good friend Sean Duffy was talking about, the fact that no one ever gets fired uh, from the FBI and DOJ without there being real credible evidence. So the suggestion that this is a political uh, hit job is just not accurate. I mean, when you, when you look at the responsibilities of, of uh, OPR, you know, they've got certain guidelines that they go by. Uh, but, but what it does call into question, Laura, is this, is if you have now Peter Strzok and Andy McCabe both having questionable, uh, you know, actions on their part, what does it mean about the whole investigation and, and what what has led up to that? I can tell you there's more information coming. The inspector general is doing a very good job. Uh, but this action tonight would not have happened if there was not credible wrongdoing uh, on, the, on the part of, of Andrew McCabe. What about the morale of the FBI at this point? 
Um, I, I, we've heard for some time that there has been a, you know, a, a desperately low morale. Uh, the credibility of the FBI being questioned over the last few years, even going all the way back to 9-11, of course, with the CIA and the intelligence there. But the intel community, you know, they have a, this vaunted reputation. They're there to protect us. Uh, so what about the FBI's morale, Congressman Duffy, at this point? Uh, can it begin to recover? Will this be seen as a shot across the bow? Uh, professional a, career agents. I think they don't. They don't like this cloud hanging over the FBI. They just want to do their job. There's are good people there. This, this, I agree. They, they show up. Um, they sign up to, to serve their country in the FBI or the DOJ. Um, and when you have the top of an agency or a bureau that's rotten like this, it's disheartening. Uh, but I think you give them hope when you start to clear it out and say, you know, we're going to get back to the basics, uh, back to an honorable organization. And so uh, I think this is the beginning of a new and fresh start for the FBI. But I, Laura, what I think is interesting, though. We've been wondering, how did all these leaks happen? How are all these stories getting, getting into the press over the last year and a half on Donald Trump and the investigation? Um, and now we see that it was coming from Andrew McCabe and, and, and from, uh, from James Comey himself. The question I have is, remember when, when Comey went and uh, briefed Donald Trump on the dossier? No one reported on the, on the dossier until someone leaked that, that, that Comey was actually briefing the president on the, or the, the president-elect, Donald Trump, on the dossier, they leaked that to CNN, and all of a sudden, every news outlet could report, news outlet could report on the dossier. The leaking that came, I think, from the FBI and the DOJ was advancing their story against Donald Trump, and it wasn't some low-level people. It appears from the information we're now getting is it was coming from the very highest level of the FBI and the DOJ.